In this video, we're going to take a look at solving radical equations. Uh, before we get into solving radical equations, we need to talk about something called an extraneous solution. So there are certain things we do in mathematics that don't necessarily change an equation. Like we can add the same amount to both sides. Cool. We can multiply the same amount to both sides. Also cool. There are certain things in math that actually do ever so slightly change the problem. Um, and so when we ever so slightly change the problem, that creates these extraneous solutions. So extraneous solutions are values we get in the solution set that in fact aren't in, uh, that I, ugh, excuse me, that aren't actually solutions because they lead to some false statement. Um, extraneous solutions will only arise typically when we are dealing with these radical, solving radical equations. There are a few other instances. But an extraneous solution is a value in the solution set that isn't actually in the domain. That isn't in the domain. If you come across an extraneous solution, it is not a solution you throw it out. So if you have x equals 2 and x equals 3, but 2 is an extraneous solution, then you say the final answer is x equals 3. Um, so so you, can, you can figure out the domain first, the allowable values for x, if you want to, and then check to see if your particular solution or solutions fall into the domain. Or what you can do is you can solve the problem. You get x equals 2 and x equals 3. Then you have to check both of them. You plug them in to the original equation and see if they actually do create a true statement. So that's generally, when we're doing radicals, that's generally my philosophy as I do that. In other situations, I do figure out the domain first, um, which we could do. But that's generally not what we do with radical equations. So here we have the square root of 3x plus 1 is equal to 5. I need to get the variable out of the radical if I'm going to solve it. So what I can do is I can square both sides. When you square things to, uh, for an equation, you square the entire side. So the whole thing gets squared. You don't square individual terms. It's the entire left side and the entire right side gets squared. OK, when I square the entire left side, the square and the square root cancel. We end up with 3x plus 1. On the right-hand side, 5 squared is 25. Now I no longer have the radical. I can solve for x like a regular linear equation. I'll subtract 1 from both sides. That gives me 3x equals 24. Divide both sides by 3, and I end up with x equals 8. So this is 8 is the only possible solution. We have to go plug it in and make sure it actually is the solution. So we actually have to verify that 8 is the correct answer. So I'm going to plug it into the original equation. Does the square root of 8 times 3 plus 1 really equal 5? We put a question mark over it because it might not, and I don't want to lie here, uh, especially not on a video. Yikes. OK, so um, let's simplify the radical. That's 24 plus 1. That's the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is equal to 5. Hey, that indicates to us that 8 was, in fact, a solution. So we can set up our solution set and put 8 right inside there. OK, what about letter B? We have the square root of x, uh, 2x minus 5 equals 3. Um, for this one, I want to square the entire left-hand side and the entire right-hand side to clear out that radical. And we end up with 2x minus 5 is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. Now I'm going to solve for x. 2x equals 14. Divide both sides by 2. I get x equals 7. So 7 is the only possible solution. Is it, in fact, the solution? Let's plug it in. We get 2 times 7 minus 5. Does that equal 3? 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 5 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. It worked. So that indicates to us that 7 is indeed a solution, or the solution. So we can put it in interval notation and move on to letter C. In letter C, I have the square root of 4x plus 1 is equal to negative 5. I'm going to square the entire left-hand side and the entire right-hand side. The square and the square root will cancel. We get 4x plus 1 is equal to negative 5 squared, which is 25. And now we're going to get x by itself. So first I'll subtract 1. That's 4x equals 24. Divide both sides by 4. We get x equals 6. OK, so x equals 6. 6 is the only possible solution. Is it, in fact, the solution? We're going to go and plug it in. 
So we have 4 times 6 plus 1. Does that really equal negative 5? 4 times 6 is 24, and 24 plus 1 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 is not the same thing as negative 5. So our only potential solution let us down. That means that this particular problem has no solution. The way you can represent that is you can write the words no solution, or you open up braces and put nothing inside because there is nothing that belongs in there. We're going to continue looking at examples of solving radical equations. Uh, one thing to note is that if you have a square root and it equals something negative, we know that it has to have no solution. So if you recognize that right away, you actually don't have to go through all the work. If you don't recognize it all the way, uh, if you don't recognize it right away, that's okay. You go through the work, you check your work, it's not going to work, no solution. All right, and our first example here, letter D, we have 3 plus the square root of uh, 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. Before we try to get rid of the radical, quote unquote, we want to make sure that if it's possible, we isolate the radical. So I don't want to square this side, because if I do, I'm going to end up having to square 3 plus the square root, which means I'm going to have to like FOIL or use the shortcut or whatever. It's not going to get rid of the radical. So if possible, isolate the radical first. I can isolate the radical by taking away 3 from both sides. That would leave me with the square root of 5x minus 4 is equal to negative 3. If we get to this point and you see square root equals something negative, you can stop. If you want to keep going, you can keep going. But we can end here and we can say, I know that there is no solution. And we can just do that and be done. Uh, if your professor asks you to justify, you can just say, well, radicals can't equal something negative. In fact, you might want to write that down just so your professor knows you're not just randomly taking a stab at guessing what the solution is. If you want to go through the motions, you can square both sides. You're going to end up with something that's not going to work. In our next example, letter E, we have 3x plus 1 raised to the 1 half minus 5 equals 0. If you want to keep it as 1 half, that, that power of 1 half, you can. If you want to switch it over to the square root, you can do that too. Really, it doesn't matter. Um, either way, it means the square root or it means to the 1 half power. And the only way that you can clear those out is by squaring that side. So if you want to leave it, you can. If you want to rewrite it, you can. But the first thing we need to do is add 5 to both sides. So I'll leave it like this. Why not? So we have 3x plus 1 to the 1 half is equal to 5. I am anticipating a solution here. Um, I'm going to find that solution by squaring the left-hand side and squaring the right-hand side. Those are going to cancel. We're going to be left with 3x plus 1 is equal to 25. Let's get x by itself. That's 3x equals 24. Divide both sides by 3, we get x equals 8. We want to verify that 8 is, in fact, the solution. We anticipate there is a solution, so it should work. But let's verify it. So that's going to be 3 times 8 plus 1 to the 1 half. Does that really equal 5? Well, 3 times 8 is 24. 24 plus 1 is 25. 25 to the 1 half, that's the square root of 25. It equals 5. So yes, it does work. So letter E has one solution. That one solution is 8. Letter D, we have the square root of 2x plus 3 is equal to x. We want to square both sides. The square root is by itself, so we're good to go. I'm going to square the left-hand side, square the right-hand side. The square and the square root will cancel, leaving me 2x plus 3 is equal to x squared. Now. Uh, I'm not going to be able to isolate x because I have two terms containing x and they don't, do not have the same power. This is a quadratic, so we want to uh, solve the quadratic. When we solve a quadratic, typically we want to set it equal to 0. Because x squared is positive, I want to take the left-hand side and move everything over. So I'm going to take away 2x and take away 3 from both sides. Now I have 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. I want to go ahead and factor this. 0 equals, um, let's see, target product is negative 3, target sum is negative 2, so it would be x minus 3 and x plus 1. We're going to solve each one, so x minus 3 could equal 0, in which case x equals 3, or x plus 1 could equal 0, in which case x equals negative 1. So this is the first example we've seen where there are two potential solutions. We need to plug them both in to see which one actually works. And if you recognize that one's not going to work now, uh, you can talk to your professor if you can throw it out, but they might want to see the work of you physically checking. So let's start with x equals 3. We want to know, does the square root of 2 times 3 plus 3 
really equal 3? It's a lot of 3s. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. All right, so we have one definite solution right here, x equals 3. Let's check x equals negative 1. Does the square root of 2 times negative 1 plus 3 really equal negative 1? I feel like you might know the answer. A square root is not going to equal something negative, so this one is definitely not going to work. Just to verify, negative 2 times, uh, sorry, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. That does not work. So this gets rejected. It's an extraneous solution. Our only solution to letter F is 3.